Today is July 17th, 2025, and you're listening to Space News First Up. Discover your next mission in the space industry with the Space News Job Exchange. Visit spacenews.com slash jobs to find top aerospace roles and connect with leading employers. And for employers, use discount code J-O-B-E-X for 15% off your next purchase. Here are today's top headlines in space. With its acquisition of Intelsat complete, SES plans to scale up a constellation of medium Earth orbit communications satellites. A week after being named NASA's acting administrator, Sean Duffy is now starting to get to work at the agency. The U.S. Space Force released new guidelines for how it will allocate finite launch infrastructure and range resources as commercial demand surges. A longtime advisor on space issues says he is concerned about changes to advisory committees by the Trump administration. And solar energy startup Celestial won a $1.2 million Space Force contract to develop novel arrays for small satellites. First Up is produced by Space News, the industry standard for professional space journalism. Visit spacenews.com for breaking news, policy updates, and original analysis. We begin today with news that with its acquisition of Intelsat complete, SES plans to scale up a constellation of medium Earth orbit, MEO, communication satellites. SES completed Thursday its acquisition of Intelsat, creating an operator with about 90 geo satellites, a third more than three of its biggest rivals, Utilsat, Telesat, and Viasat, combined. In an interview, SES CEO Adel Al Saleh said while he expects the geo communications market to stabilize soon after years of decline, he sees a major growth opportunity in MEO, where SES already has nearly 30 O3B satellites. SES is preparing to shift from launching one next-generation constellation at a time to building a continuously expanding fleet, envisioning hundreds of MEO satellites. SES plans to spend close to $700 million annually on capital expenditures over the next three years, excluding commitments to Europe's Iris Squared Sovereign Broadband Constellation. A week after being named NASA's acting administrator, Sean Duffy is now starting to get to work at the agency. President Trump last week named Duffy the new acting head of the agency, a role he has in addition to serving as Secretary of Transportation. Neither NASA nor Duffy had said anything publicly since then, and the agency's website continued to list Janet Petro as acting administrator, raising questions about who was in charge. A NASA spokesperson said late Wednesday that Duffy is working as acting administrator and would address the agency's workforce by video on Friday. Testifying before the House Transportation Committee on Wednesday, Duffy said it was just my first full day at NASA, even though he spent much of it at the hearing. He added that leading NASA is not going to impact my ability to do the important work of the DOT. The U.S. Space Force released new guidelines for how it will allocate finite launch infrastructure and range resources as commercial demand surges. In a policy document Wednesday, the Space Force reaffirmed its support of the commercial industry to help maintain U.S. space access and industrial capacity, but cautioned that government resources are finite and will be prioritized so that national security concerns take priority. A surge in commercial launch activity at Cape Canaveral, and Vandenberg has strained resources and infrastructure capacity at those launch sites. A longtime advisor on space issues says he is concerned about changes to advisory committees by the Trump administration. Retired Air Force General Lester Lyles said Wednesday that efforts by the administration to suspend or terminate advisory committees or make sweeping changes to their memberships was very worrisome. He said that the roles of advisory committees are often misunderstood, and such committees can play a critical role now with widespread layoffs or retirements at agencies. Lyles has chaired the NASA Advisory Council for several years, as well as the National Space Council's advisory group. He said the future of both in the current administration was uncertain. Solar Energy Startup Celestial won a $1.2 million Space Force contract to develop novel arrays for small satellites. The company said Wednesday it won a SpaceWorks award to optimize silicon solar cells and power modules for speedy integration and assembly. The project will culminate in Celestial manufacturing one kilowatt of solar cells and modules in two weeks, 
followed by a two-week sprint to assemble and integrate the solar array. Share your company's news with the entire space industry through Stellar Dispatch, the press release service from Space News. Learn more and use discount code SD2106 for 15% off when you submit yours at spacenews.com slash Stellar Dispatch. In other news, Breaking Defense reports that the White House has nominated a new Vice Chief of the Space Force. The administration announced Wednesday that it was nominating Lieutenant General Sean Bratton to be the next Vice Chief of Space Operations. Bratton, the Deputy Chief of Space Operations for Strategy, Plans, Programs, and Requirements, would replace General Michael Getlin, selected to lead the Golden Dome Missile Defense Initiative. Air and Space Forces magazine reports that the nominee to lead space policy in the Defense Department has advocated for combining the National Reconnaissance Office with the Space Forces Space Systems Command. Mark Berkowitz, nominated to be Assistant Secretary of Defense for Space Policy, co-authored a paper included in a new book that recommended combining the two organizations. Doing so, Co-author Chris Williams said at an event this week would create a single, more agile organization that could result in improved acquisition and create more integrated mission architectures. An alternative would be to keep NRO and SSC separate, but co-locate them at NRO's Virginia headquarters. KHO-TV Houston reports that Intuitive Machines plans to expand its Houston headquarters. The company said Wednesday that it will add a spacecraft development and production space, along with a warehouse and storage facility, to its current 105,000-square-foot headquarters at Spaceport Houston on the grounds of Ellington Airport. The $12 million project was approved this week by the Houston City Council, which oversees Ellington, with construction set to start later this summer. Intuitive Machines is best known for developing lunar landers and is also working on a lunar terrain vehicle and spacecraft projects. The Chosen Biz reports that South Korea has added a lunar base and a Mars lander to its long-term space exploration plans. The Korea Aerospace Administration, CASA, the country's space agency, unveiled an updated version of its space exploration roadmap Thursday, calling for development of a lunar lander by 2040 and an economic base on the moon by 2045. The plan also includes a Mars orbiter mission by 2035 and Mars lander by 2045. Washington Post reports that a large Martian meteorite was auctioned off at a slightly higher price than expected. Sotheby's had projected a 25-kilogram rock, the largest Martian meteorite found to date, would sell for between $2 million and $4 million at auction. The winning bid was $5.3 million, including fees, after what the auction house called a dramatic 15-minute bidding battle. Sotheby's did not disclose the identity of the winning bidder, 